So how'd it go? Well enough. If they're smart, they won't send anyone else. Really? Oh, that is so good to hear. Learn your lesson, girl? Totally. From now on, I only steal from the right people. That ain't the lesson. This game did get a little bit of a criticism from reviewers and commentators talking about how at this point in the game it sort of gets lost in its own pace where normally at this point or at least in the original game at this point in the story the only thing for you to really do I mean you can explore around a little bit and maybe find some hidden items or something but really the only thing to do was to climb up the wire up to the plate and attack the Shinra headquarters but in this version of the game there are a lot of side quests. This isn't really a side quest here, this is a mandatory one. And I feel like this really isn't that bad of an intrusion into the story, because this leads to you gaining access to a way of getting up to the plate. But it does perhaps drag on a little bit too long. The dungeons in this game, I believe, in my opinion anyway, are just a little bit too long. And this one, while not quite as long as some of the other ones, um, my whole point being, you don't want to drag this section of the story. Because as you get closer to the end of the game, or at least uh, the end of the portion of the story that takes place in Midgar, you kind of you ramped up the energy with, say, uh, the Sector 7 plate collapsing and Aerith being kidnapped. It's like, okay, you got to go rescue Aerith. You got to, in some fashion strike back at Shinra, but, you know, Cloud, Tifa, and Barrett are dicking around in the slums for a while before they go and do it. It's, it's a bit of a disappointment, but, I mean, this episode here is going to detail a quest that makes a little bit more sense, and we're going to see the return of Corneo, so I guess, I guess this one isn't as bad, but I'm probably going to cut out a lot of the side quests. Long time no see. What brings you back here? Well, we need to find a way to get topside as quickly as possible. And we figured Corneo ought to know one. Is that so? In that case, I can help. You serious? Then tell us! Follow me. Hmm. Let's just hear him out. <clears throat> so, what's the deal with the hole? Unfinished business. If you three give me a hand with it, I'll give you what you need to get topside. You want us to go back into the sewers with you? What's down there? Corneo's hidey hole. That's where I'm headed. You're not gonna try to screw us over, are you? If that's what you think, walk away. I'll find somebody else to work with. And you'll have to find another way to get topside. All right, we're in. Say what? He betrays us, he dies. Fine by me. He means it. I'll tell you more after we've climbed down. When you're good to go, let me know. You guys ready? Okay, follow me. Seriously, what's the deal with the hole? It's a trap for the Don's enemies. What? No one's ever gotten out alive. Well, until recently, that is. You are. 
are gonna hold up your end of the bargain, right? Long as you hold up yours, yeah. I don't trust you and I don't like you. So if you so much as breathe in a suspicious way, I'll turn that face of yours into a honeycomb. I'd save you bullets for the monsters if I were you. Some are a lot tougher than you'd think. Hate to say it, but I can barely take them on my own. You, on the other hand, shouldn't have any trouble, am I right? Let's get this over with. This episode would be exceptionally long without fast forwarding, so I have to. Head for the trunk line. It marks the border with Sector 7. You three lead the way. I'll follow a short distance behind. Character of Leslie didn't exist in the original game. Apparently, he is a character from the compilation of Final Fantasy VII, some of the side stories and comic books and games that have started appearing in the PlayStation 2 era. Apparently continued on for some time, but he's a new character that wasn't in the original game. Now, there was a character that, in a sense, took his place. Wasn't really an important character, didn't have a name or anything, was just the guy standing at the entry to Corneo's mansion and was the one that you had to talk to about um, bringing Aerith and dressing Cloud up as a woman to go and sneak in. But not really a, um, an actually important character, so should really go without mentioning. This one seems to have a little bit of motivation behind him. Isn't simply a much more important than the nameless character we had seen before. Although I'm not particularly fond of this guy either. The Mark of Avalanche. Right. Jesse and Big stashed the skeleton key down here. I never got the chance to thank them for what they did. Tifa. Let's just keep moving, okay? Hate to interrupt, but the trunk line's just through that door. The one over there? Yeah, we heard you. About time. This way. There should be a door with Corneo's mark on it around here somewhere. Hey, wasn't this locked before? Your time to shine. Clear the path ahead, would you? Yeah, yeah. Can I ask you something? Why did you help us out before? You could have lost everything. Andrea, you told me to. That really it? And I couldn't bring myself to let it happen again. Huh? It doesn't matter. Let's go. There was a lot of returning back to areas that we had previously been to. This seemed like it may have just sort of been a dungeon that we had worked our way through, but we've kind of returned here, and I know I kind of feel strange about that. This is it. Yeah. So how are we supposed to get topside? Through here. Then you're telling me we're not done? Sorry, guys. But it's not that simple. <laughs> no! Wait! We gotta catch him! Huh? He took the key to the door! Without it, we're screwed! Let's go. It's always been a common thing in these kinds of RPGs where you could go and return to areas that you were previously at before, and even return to areas with some sort of, like, storyline reason. Like, you return to somewhere you were in order to... Like, the in the original game, you return to Midgar in, in order to... Um, take out Hojo, who's at the cannon. But in most of those cases, you're either returning to like a town to have a conversation with somebody, or in the sense of the returning to Midgar in the original game, you're going through a new dungeon. Now this is essentially just a return to an old dungeon with more powerful enemies in it. So 
I don't want to. I don't want to make an accusation of them being lazy because clearly an enormous amount of effort went into this game, and the sheer number of individual like objects that you encounter. Like I, I had read that the reason why this game ended up being like a hundred gigabytes was because the because the developers just kept building new assets. Now it's maybe not as obvious as it would have been because of the um, fact that we're returning the places and the fact that a lot of the assets seem to be of a low quality because this is a PlayStation 4, not a PlayStation 5 game. But there does seem to be a lot of individual things and the sort of linear progression through a lot of these levels sort of bears that out. Like, for example, like we're moving through the dungeon here and we're like door leads to hallway leads to door leads to other hallway leads to room all that kind of stuff and in this kind of environment it's sort of better suited to the hardware of the PlayStation 4 because the slow hard disk access you sort of need to load each area by individual chunks so like load this chunk then load this chunk then load this chunk that kind of thing when you have some of the more open areas, I'm changing subjects here, I know, but when you have some of the more open areas, like the Sector like 5 or Sector 7 or Wall Market areas, and it's more open, you get a lot of like lower quality assets showing your face. Give it back! That's... Give it back. That's not a key. Sorry. That's not your pendant either. Were they family? No. It was all just a dream, wasn't it? But one day? No. Time to wake up and forget. Six months ago. On that day, Corneo picked her as a bride, and on the next, she vanished without a trace. But before she did, she gave it back. Salt on the wound. The thing cost me a small fortune. Why did you want to come down here? Revenge. I know I need to let go, but I can't. I need closure, because without it, I'll never be able to move on. It's fine. As long as you get us topside, we're still in. Thanks. And don't worry. I got you. <sighs> you all right. I know a shortcut. Follow me. I personally would have preferred that Leslie's motivation not be simple revenge. Not that that's a terrible um, motivation for a character, but the fact is that this game, Final Fantasy VII as a whole, is littered with characters whose motivation is revenge of some sort. Tifa joins Avalanche because she wants revenge against Shinra for destruction of her hometown. The same thing with Barrett. Uh, Cloud's motivation through a majority of the game is revenge against Sephiroth. So there's three main characters whose primary motivation is revenge. In this remake, you have Jesse's motivation seems to be revenge for what happened to her father. So it's there's a lot of people wanting revenge, and just throwing Leslie in there, trying to get revenge against Corneo of all people, it's a little redundant. So, I mean, he's a side character, he's not really important, but I would have preferred something a little, a little different.
It's Leslie. Got some urgent info for the Don. <laughs> Come alone? Of course. Really? Without my little avalanche kittens? I thought I told you to round them up and bring them to me. Actually, it's them I came to talk about. Hmm. Uh. I think I need to remind you why I'm down here. Spilling the beans to those three escape artists was a serious mistake. Now I'm on Shinra's shit list. The plate stunt was meant to be an unprecedented tragedy, claiming countless innocent lives. But those naughty little kittens organized an evacuation and screwed up the plan. I'll let you in on a secret. Shinra is going to abandon Midgar and build something close to paradise. I was invited to be a part of it. Dawn of a new and improved wall market! I'll be lucky to live another week. <sighs> Leslie. I was gonna let you run your own place. Give you a piece of the action. What a shame. Pop quiz time, kiddo! Villains like us only divulge our evil plans in a certain situation. But what is that situation, hmm? When you think you've already won. <laughs> Goodbye. Think again, Don. Huh? It's you. You were talking about the Sector 7 plan. Keep talking, asshole. Ah! Over there! Over there, look! Don't try to bullshit us. But that's the thing! It's not technically bullshit when it's true. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to play with your food. Gone out. Bastard. First him, then Corneo. I myself torn a little bit about the portrayal of Don Corneo in this version of the game. On one hand, this is a very different individual than we saw in the original. Corneo in the original game was more of... He was definitely a secondary antagonist, but he was a bit of a joke of a character. He was just sort of this fat loser who's overly used to being in charge, and eventually things don't go his way after he goes and he spills the beans. He has to evacuate Medgar, and then... You eventually run into him in Wutai, kidnapping Yuffie and Elena. But he came across as a joke of a character. In this, although he still looks goofy as hell, he comes across as much more of a physical threat, which I don't think he should. And his, uh, his overall demeanor is somebody that you have to take quite a bit more seriously. On one hand, I feel like, you know, like don't mess with the character too much, leave him closer to the way he was in the original game so he can feel like he's the same guy. On the other hand, you do, for a longer game with this section of the story, the Midgar section, stretched out the way it is, you do need stronger secondary antagonists. And a guy like Don Corneo, who's goofy as hell, whereas at the same time you have other goofy as hell characters like that stupid gang we keep stumbling across. It feels like, okay, makes a little bit more sense. And plus, I think the voice acting is overall all right, good enough to have him be a more effective character. You okay? Where's Cornell? Sorry. Bastard got away. Uh, it's 
fine. I'll track him down eventually. Not like I have anything better to do. You know, I wouldn't be so sure about that. <sighs> she could still be out there. Can never be sure how much someone means to you till they're gone. Don't give up on her yet. Was it a message? What was she trying to tell me? We'll meet again. Huh? It's a symbol of reunion. <laughs> then I guess I've got no choice but to find her first. Thanks. Hold up. I think you might be forgetting something. I haven't. Found it. Let's get out of here. And then I'll give you what you need. So Corneo got away and we will not encounter him for the remainder of Chapter 1 of the remake. Maybe we'll see him in the later episodes. Honestly, we should. We should run into him in Wutai. But maybe we'll see him again before then. Who knows? Ah. Uh, taste that sweet Midgar small. <laughs> this way. Grappling guns. You can practically fly with the souped-up motors on these babies. Sector 7 is on the other side of that wall. The guns will get you over and past it, along with any number of other obstacles. But they're one-way tickets. So once you start up, there's no coming back. You should probably get your affairs in order, just in case. Thank you. Didn't tell you before, but we're looking for someone, too. That right. Hope you find them. You too. Everyone who got out ahead of us is probably... Oh, what brings you here? Gifts from an angel. They're to be used to help the people of Sector 7 rebuild. The angel of the slums? You didn't meet her, did you? Tell me, what was she like? Never met her. Just her go-between. A shame. Oh, bless her sweet soul. I don't know what to say. I'll make sure the funds are put to good use. Here. Why don't you take this? Something tells me you can use it more than me. There. Not too shabby now, is it? <sighs> Aerith's up there waiting for us. Then we better get a move on, huh? Ready? <laughs> 